Welcome back to Rich Words Music, where today we're doing a comparison between two of my personal favourite P90 equipped workhorse electric guitars. Here we have my trusty 2020 Epiphone Classic Worn SG in this beautiful satin Inverness green finish. And here we have the 2022 Yamaha Revstar standard model with the P90 pickups. Now for those of you not that familiar with them, P90s are amazing pickups. They have their own unique character going on. They're aggressive and raw and punky and raucous. They have this mid push which is just fantastic to listen to and in my opinion they're an extremely underrated pickup. I for my part love them and I have a bunch of different guitars with them in and these two represent the two sort of different sides and extremes of P90 pickups but we'll get more into that in the playing part of the video and in my opinion part of the video even later on. So what I'm going to do today then is I'll tell you about the specifications and the features of these two guitars then we'll play them in a variety of musical settings and styles and we'll find out how similar and how different these two guitars sound from one another and at the end I'll go back to my aforementioned opinions and tell you in a bit more detail what I think about both of these two guitars and which I think is going to be worth your money more at the end of the day. Now these are both what I would call mid-tier guitars, they're not super cheap, they're not super expensive either so they're kind of within range of pretty much everybody. Currently it's early 2023, you'll pay about $400 or euros for the Epiphone SG Classic Worn and you'll pay around $800 or euros for the Revstar Standard so it's almost twice the price of the Epiphone but you can get good deals on both models used and what we're going to do in this video is find out whether this one is going to be worth the extra money. First though let's go into those features and specifications and I think we'll start with the Epiphone. So this is the 2020 Epiphone Classic Worn SG in this wonderful, this stupendous Worn Inverness Green satin finish. And if you just look at that, it is an absolutely beautiful guitar to behold. It has that satin finish absolutely everywhere, apart from on the front of the neck and the fingerboard, of course, and it just looks lovely. It drew me to it straight away when I saw the new 2020 Epiphone catalog a couple of years ago, and I managed to snap this one up for a bargainous price on the local eBay marketplace. So happy days for me, and it's something that you should definitely try and find if you can because used deals on these guitars tend to be very very decent. So this is an Epiphone SG classic worn and it is more traditionally themed so therefore we have a mahogany body, we have this batwing style headstock here in black it looks fantastic again what a beautiful guitar this is. We have two Epiphone Pro P90 soap bar style pickups, a three-way selector switch and a volume and tone control for each of the pickups and your standard Epiphone slash Gibson stop bar tailpiece operation there, tunematic bridge. Now if I flip it round again, look at that. Beautiful grain, beautiful mahogany body, looks to be a two-piece body there. You can see our control cavity there on the back. And if we move up to the neck, look, satin all across the back. The profile of the neck is Epiphone's famed 60s slim taper and it's a D shape. It's a kind of love it or hate it shape. One of my very first electric guitars was an Epiphone SG, so I love this shape. It felt at home for me straight away when picking it up. So it's a slim neck, really easy to get up and down. We have 22 medium jumbo frets on an Indian laurel fingerboard, dot inlays, we have a 24 and 3 quarter inch scale length, and we have a graph tech nut on this guitar. Moving up to the headstock, flip it over to the back and you can see that we've got vintage style Epiphone Deluxe tuners. So that's the Epiphone SG Classic Worn P90 Edition. Now let's look at its more expensive brother or cousin, the Revstar Standard. So this is the 2022 Yamaha Revstar Standard P90 Edition, and for around twice the price of the Epiphone, you'd probably expect it to have a bit more going on, and it does have that indeed. First off, you don't see it here, but the guitar comes in a very nice, thick, chunky, deluxe, padded gig bag. It's a very decent gig bag and I really wouldn't hesitate to take it out on a gig or anything like that. Now we've got this beautiful swift blue finish here and a black back. You can see that the guitar and the back of the body are gloss finished but the back of the neck is satin finished just like the Epiphone. Now the mahogany body is chambered on this guitar and we have a maple top as well so that's going to give us a different tonality. And when we get to the hardware and the pickups we have a lot of extra features to talk about. Now on a guitar like this with two P90 pickups like with the Epiphone Phone SG, you'd expect to have three different options here. You'd expect to have the bridge pickup, you'd expect to have the neck pickup, and you'd expect to have both together. 
and we do get that on this guitar, but there's loads more to look at as well. First off, we have the in-between two and four positions, which through a bit of Yamaha's own magic give us sort of in-between, almost stratty, quacky sort of tones. And we also have a volume control and a tone control. Now the tone control, you can push in or pull up to activate Yamaha's focus switch. The focus switch is a passive boost. It gives you a boost in your tone. It gives you more aggression. It's like adding hotter pickups to your guitar. It gives you a boost in the lows, a boost in the mids as well. And it's a really interesting effect. I'm not gonna spend too much time on the extra positions or the focus switch in this video. However, if you'd like to hear them in more detail, I have a dedicated video on this guitar, which you can watch up there or up there later if you'd like to do that. So in this video, I'm gonna really be focused focusing on focus switch off, bridge, neck, and middle, both pickups on selections as much as possible. But just know there is more on tap if you want it. Now, if we move up to the neck of the Revstar, we're also pretty different to the Epiphone. So there's a lot more wood in the neck. It's a much thicker feeling profile. It's a medium to slightly chunky C-shaped neck. And as I mentioned previously, it's got a satin finish, so it's really easy to get up and down as well. We also have 22 frets on this guitar, but they're jumbo and they're also stainless steel. So that's a pretty cool thing to have as well. Now, the scale length is 24 and three quarter inches, just like the Epiphone. We also have a 305 millimeter or 12 inch fingerboard radius, again, just like the Epiphone, so nice and flat. And we have binding on the neck and the body and on the headstock too on the Yamaha, so that's pretty cool. One other feature that we don't see is that the neck of the Revstar is carbon reinforced and that Yamaha tells us aids in tonal transfer. Moving up to the headstock, we've got that Revstar headstock and Yamaha's own tuners along with a plastic nut here. So that's the Revstar standard. For about 800 euros, you can kind of see where the money is being spent. You can see where the extra features are, but how do they sound? How do they perform? That's what we're gonna get to next in the video. So my next plan is to play these two guitars to the full extent of my capabilities, and that's exactly what I'm gonna do. So my rig for today is gonna be my Hughes and Kettner Black Spirit 200 amplifier. We'll start on the Apps Clean channel. We'll play some poppy stuff and some folky stuff, some light classic riffs, then we'll kick in the crunch channel and play some classic rock and some indie. After that, we'll go up to the amp's lead channel, we'll play some harder rock and some punk rock and see how that sounds. And at the very end, we'll go back to the clean channel. I'll kick in my Rev G3 distortion pedal. We'll tune the two guitars down to drop D and we'll see if they can do a bit of metal. Enough talking then, it's the 2020 Epiphone SG up against the 2022 Yamaha Revstar standard. Let's play them now and we'll speak in more detail about them afterwards. <laughs>
Okay then, so that was the Epiphone SG Classic Ward up against the Yamaha Revstar Standard P90 Edition, and I hope you enjoyed the playing and the tones. Leave me a comment and tell me which of the two guitars you preferred in terms of sounds and in terms of looks as well, because that's a very important battle that I want to speak about too. But like I said in the intro to this video, I believe that these are two guitars you should absolutely be considering if you're looking for a mid priced P90 equipped workhorse of a guitar. And so what I want to do now is speak a bit more about those considerations that you could be making, the sort of things that influence your decision making when it comes to buying a new guitar. And there's a few different things that we need to look at. The first couple of things would be the price and the looks of the guitars. Now in terms of looks, both of these guitars are stunning, at least for me personally. That's a totally personal decision, but this Epiphone SG is just wonderful to behold. I mean, that green caught me straight away. I still look at it in awe from time to time and it has the new Epiphone headstock as well so that's a really cool bonus too. In 2020 Epiphone got to have a more Gibson-esque headstock and I think everybody thought that that was a good thing. In terms of looks I cannot fault this guitar it looks absolutely fantastic. The Revstar looks fantastic too and I love the swift blue finish but overall I have to say I probably think that the way this one's caught my eye so consistently means that it has to win on the looks front and when it comes to pricing of course well you're paying half the money for the Epiphone so it wins there on pure price alone but does it win in terms of value for money and does it win in terms of features? Well I have to say that the extras that you get with the Yamaha, you get the gig bag, you get the stainless steel frets, you get the chambered mahogany body, you get the carbon reinforced neck and so on, all of that is going to cost more for sure. So in terms of costing 800 as opposed to 400 I think that's justifiable but as we'll come to in the later parts of the opinions I'll tell you which one I think is going to be worth more in terms of pure value for money in my opinion. So that is coming at the end of of the video. After that we come to the build quality and the hardware and I have to say from personal experience that as soon as you pick it up you can feel that the Yamaha Revstar Standard is a higher quality guitar than the Epiphone. I think some of that comes down to the fact that the Epiphone has a satin finish and that kind of makes it feel unfinished in a way or a bit rough and ready but that's exactly the vibe that Epiphone are going for with these guitars of course and that does of course also make them cheaper to produce. The whole production process of the Yamaha is going to be more expensive. I didn't even talk just before about the chambered mahogany body and the maple top but all of that is going to add cost to the production process and again justify the higher price. Now in terms of the rest of the build quality there's nothing wrong with the Epiphone whatsoever you know everything about it was done well. I did buy it used and I don't know if the previous owner had it set up but it was set up pretty well when I got it. I paid for my local luthier friend to set it up even better for me and it's been really really good since then. It's not quite as stable as the Yamaha. It doesn't like cold 
winters and I need to get it set up again after the winter has come and gone. But it's a really decent guitar. The frets were good right from the off. The intonation was good as well. The Epiphone tuners have always done their job. The one little issue that I've had with this guitar and I've had with other Epiphone guitars too is that sometimes when you flick to the neck pickup you hear nothing and you realize that something must be coming a bit loose in there. Give it a bit of a wiggle and the neck pickup comes back on but that is something that's going to be needing to be looked at in the future at some point and it's something that if I was to gig this guitar I would really want to have 100% reliable before I did so. Now in terms of the Yamaha no such issues whatsoever. Everything works perfectly there and it's built to perfection. Everything feels fantastic. The neck is fantastic to feel and to play. The hardware is all totally reliable and rugged and does the job. I've seen a lot of people online saying that they'd like the RevStars to have locking tuners but for me not really necessary. I might consider getting them if I really upgrade the guitar at some point in the future but the Yamaha tuners do their job absolutely no problem whatsoever. So in terms of build quality and the hardware the Yamaha is a step above but it should be at that price shouldn't it? The next thing to talk about is the playability and the necks of the two guitars and this is where they differ quite significantly. The SG feels like a much smaller guitar overall than the Revstar and that's probably because it is. It has a much thinner body, it has much less paint on it, it's just mahogany, it doesn't have a maple top, it has that smaller thinner D-shaped slim taper neck and so that's going to be something of a personal choice as well. Do you like a D-shaped neck? Do you prefer a slim taper? Or do you like something a little bit chunkier and smoother feeling like that? of the Yamaha Revstar. Now for me personally, one of my very first guitar necks was a slim taper D-shaped neck on an Epiphone SG, so I'm really at home with this. But overall these days, I do tend to move slightly more towards chunkier necks, so I probably would say that the Revstar overall is my favorite of the two. But in terms of playability, both these guitars are really, really decent. Now in terms of this being an SG, you've got great upper fret access on the Revstar as well. You've got that double cutaway that also affords you great upper fret access. One other issue which you're going to be looking at with guitars though is the weight and as you can imagine there's a big difference there as well. You would expect the Epiphone SG to be a much lighter guitar and it is. This specific one weighs 2.8 kilograms which is about six pounds four and it balances very well on a strap too thankfully and you can see proof of that at the dedicated video that I did of this guitar a couple of years ago. So it weighs 2.8 kilograms very much a lightweight guitar but doesn't feel like a toy at all. I really really like the feel and weight of this one. The Revstar by contrast is a little bit too heavy and I would like to see it a pound or so lighter if possible. My specific example weighs 3.8 kilograms which is eight pounds six or thereabouts and again shave a pound off it and I would be even happier. And I would think that you could do that seeing as it's got a chambered body anyway. You could have thought that it would be a little bit lighter than it actually is. But there you go. I love the weight of the SG and I love it a lot more than the weight of the Revstar. Now I'm someone who prefers a lighter weight guitar but your mileage may vary. But for me personally if I see two identical guitars on the wall. First I'll pick them on playability of course but after that my second criteria will be the weight and I'll pick the lighter guitar. Like I said you may prefer a heavier guitar but that's just my personal opinion. Now in terms of the rest of the playability the Yamaha edges it slightly. It just feels like a slightly more refined and elegant instrument to play which you don't want all of the time but most of the time you probably do. Then we come to the sounds of the two guitars and this is something which was really interesting for me to compare directly as well because I hadn't done that with these two guitars before and I actually found that in some circumstances the two guitars sound pretty much identical and in others they sound significantly different so I thought that was absolutely fascinating. Now as we started off with the clean tones instantly you could hear that the Epiphone has a little bit more of a snarl to it especially on the bridge pickup. It's a slightly thinner sounding guitar whereas the Revstar has a bit more body to the tone. It's a bit silkier, a bit smoother, and it gets much warmer and jazzier too, especially if you turn on the focus switch. It also has the two and four in between positions, but again, I didn't want to focus on them too much. And actually, between you and me, I don't use those in between settings or the focus switch that much at all when I'm playing the Revstar. I'm usually on bridge, neck, or both pickups together. And on the clean settings, both pickups together is where it's really at for me. You can get beautiful, quacky, funky tones out of these guitars. They're so dynamic and juicy sounding. I love P90s for this kind of tone and could noodle on that both pickup selection setting on a clean amp with a bit of reverb all day. And that's pretty much what I do a lot of the time. When we went up to the crunch sounds and did indie rock and classic rock, we got lovely brash, mid-range pushed honking sounds from both guitars. The Epiphone has a slightly more classic sounding voice to me. It sounds 
sounds a bit more like a vintage P90, where again, the Revstar sounds a bit smoother, a bit more modern, almost a bit more hi-fi. It's a very interesting difference in the two effects, and it's quite subtle a lot of the time, but once you start listening out for it, you do tend to notice it. Now, a lot of the time, especially for classic rock, I would actually take the SG over the Revstar because it just has that kind of rock and roll vibe going onto it. It's kind of an unspoken thing, but it just works better for me. And I would also say that that's the case when we move to the hard rock and the punk rock stuff as well. There's just a little bit more of a vibe about the Epiphone SG, a little bit more rawness that just works for those styles of music. With the Revstar, you get beautiful kind of clarity for everything and you get that smoothness to it, but sometimes it just has slightly less of an edge than the Epiphone SG. When we went down to drop D and did the metal stuff with the Rev G3, I thought that both sets of pickups really gave a great account of themselves. You get wonderful clarity for playing metal with P90 pickups, and both of these guitars did a great job at that. Of course, if you're playing exclusively metal, you'd probably want to go for a humbucking guitar, but there you go, both of these guitars can do it, and they really do it quite well. They're really kind of aggressive and rude sounding, really, really decent for that. And again, with the Revstar, I have a couple of examples where you can hear the focus switch playing higher gain stuff and it does thicken things up and sound a bit more like a humbucker but you lose some of that clarity and so for that reason I prefer to keep it on the standard single coil P90 setting. So those are my feelings on the sounds then and the next thing I want to talk about is competition because although we're comparing these two guitars today there are other guitars out there with two P90s that you could be considering if you're in this sort of a ballpark and I'm just going to name a couple of my favorites just for you as a recommendation now. If you want to go really cheap you can go to Harley Benton they don't have an SG Type 1 with two P90s at a cheap price, but they do have the wonderful SC450 P90 Gold Top, which I've done many, many videos on, one of which you can see there. That's €149, Euros, and that sounds absolutely fantastic. They also have a more Les Paul Special Type guitar, which is kind of a flat-bodied Les Paul with two P90 pickups, as do Epiphone. Those are both models that are available. The Harley Benton's about €200. Euros. The Epiphone is about €400, so about the same price as the SG model. Those are both both great guitars, fantastic fun, and give you really raw vintage P90 rock and roll tones. And if you're feeling particularly adventurous, then another guitar that I would really, really recommend is actually a signature model. It's the Fender Jim Adkins Signature Tele. That has two P90s, it's a thin line model, and it's a fantastic instrument. Jim Adkins is the front man with Jimmy Eat World, an amazing punk rock band, so that's something that I really love. I don't know if you'd buy a signature model if you were not a fan of the band in question or the artist in question. That is actually a really interesting question for a future video and drop me your comments down there on what you think about that. But anyway, the Jim Adkins Fender Tele is a fantastic guitar and at some point I will own one too. But at 850 euros or thereabouts it's even more expensive than the Revstar here and more than twice the price of the classic worn SG. And so my conclusions on these two guitars are as follows. I love them both and I'm super happy and super thankful that I get to have both in my current collection. Now the Epiphone SG for 400 euros or thereabouts new is fantastic value for money. It's a rough and ready feeling guitar, but it's just really unput downable when it comes to playing punk and rock and roll and stuff like that. It's raw and raucous and it has that vintage P90 sort of a tone, which you really have to experience in person to really understand. It's fantastic fun, it's super lightweight, it's easy to play, and I love this guitar and I could never imagine getting rid of it. It also happens to be possibly the most beautiful guitar that I own, despite not being blue in color, which is very, very interesting for me. Now, the Revstar is a more refined, more elegant version of this, and it represents a slightly less raucous voicing of the P90 pickup. And I've actually seen a few people online saying that they don't quite have the vibe in these guitars, but for me personally, it absolutely does. It is a great sounding guitar. It gives you so many options. The build quality is absolutely fantastic. It does feel in terms of quality like a cut above the Epiphone, and it is a wonderful instrument. Now that age old question of which of the two would I have if I could only keep one is very, very, in fact, it's exceedingly difficult to answer. And my head would say, keep the Revstar because it has that beautiful array of tones. It can do so much and it feels fantastic. It's got the stainless steel fret, it's got the gig bag, it's got everything in one box. But sometimes my heart would go for the Epiphone because it has these beautiful looks. It's so lightweight and easy to play. And because it has that raw P90 punk rock vibe, which I absolutely love. So it's a super hard question. Head says Revstar, heart says 
SG by Epiphone, and at the end of the day, I guess I've got to pick my heart over my head. So I go for the Epiphone and have 400 spare euros or dollars in my pocket to upgrade it as well, if I wanted to do that. Now, I hope that this video has answered all of the questions that you may have had about these two specific guitars, but if there's anything else you'd like to know, drop me a comment down there, let me know, and I shall answer to the best of my ability. And if you're still around, it would make my day if you consider liking the video or maybe even subbing to my channel, because that really does help. But I've been Rich for Rich Words Music, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.